data reported to the bridge as usual for Red Alert. Even though they were still in space dock, and there stood that annoying wolf glaring at him as if to say, I will tolerate your existence because you are my superior officer, but I would just as soon kill you. Picard appeared from the other turbo lift. Report, Mr. Wolf. There has been an explosion on Debt 6, Section 19. Security and medical are responding. It's in Dr. Crosher's quarters, sir. Picard started to lose his composure for just an instant, then stoically continued. Are the fire containment fields working? Yes, sir. Fire is extinguished. I'm going down there. Number one, you have the bridge. Data seemed calm as he worked at his console, but his mind was racing faster than usual. If the blast had not incinerated everything properly, they would be able to trace his semen from the pseudo-RNA sequence. It was not too long that Picard had called a meeting of the senior officers. Data did his best to act surprised when the captain told them that Beverly had been killed in the explosion. Data, I don't recall ever hearing of a neural stimulator exploding like that before. Do you know of any cases like this? Yes, sir. There have been 31 reported cases of drastic neural stimulator malfunction. Most of them before the phased overload shunt was incorporated on store date 25662. However, nine cases have occurred since then, six because of an irregular power supply in the oscillating fizz buckle manifold, one when the vortex inverter... Data, I don't need to know exactly why each one exploded. Why did the captain always do that? Oh, the others did it once in a while too, but mostly Picard. Picard asks me a question. I try to answer it to the best of my ability. After all, I would not want to leave out something important. Picard stops me after about two sentences. Well, if he did not want to know the answer, why did he ask the question? Yes, he would have to take care of Picard next. Day to day dreamed of Jean-Luc's hard body, his sinewy limbs, and his firm little butt straining against Data's own manhood. Of course, he ended up getting another excruciating hard-on. Jean-Luc Picard stared at his breakfast. He would normally have eaten with Beverly, but that wasn't going to happen any more. Then he heard the door chime. He was surprised to see Data in the doorway. What can I do for you, Mr. Data? Captain, I am finding it hard to deal with Dr. Crusher's death. Are you having the same difficulty? Data, I assure you that I am not as calm as I appear, but each of us must get through this in his own way. I had hoped we could help each other, sir. Mr. Data, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but I just don't think of you in that way. Before Picard could do anything, Data used the Vulcan nerve pinch on him. Data unsealed his uniform and eased Picard to the floor under him. Opening the captain's mouth, he rammed his penis into it. Data was able to make us come any flavour he wanted to. Lemon, peppermint, hot chocolate, Earl Grey tea. So of course he could synthesise any molecules he wanted to including several highly toxic compounds. You will not interrupt me again, old man. He was so happy, he didn't even notice that he was going to come until it happened. Computer. Tea. Earl Grey. Hot. Tater drank most of the tea, exactly the same amount of liquid as the cum he had produced, spilling what was left into the puddle on the floor. He pressed the cup into Picard's hand and strode briskly out. At last, he had relief once again. <music> Data and Geordie entered the observation lounge to see Riker, Worf and Cellar, along with Admiral No Funny Shit from Starbase 173. Gentlemen, I regret to inform you that Captain Picard is dead. We have determined the cause of death to be poisoning. According to replicator records, he hoarded tea at 0726 hours. 
He was found beside the replicator, with the teacup in his hand, and tea spilled on the floor. My team scanned and found five grams per litre of Andorian brogamoid toxin in the tea. But that's impossible! Nobody can just go and make something like that in the replicator. It wouldn't comply. Yes, I suspect foul play as well. Commander Riker, condensing your fine service record, I'm promoting you to captain of the ship. I wish it was under better circumstances. Yes, sir. Data! What is Commander Troy's scheduled ETA from Vulcan? Maybe she can help us with this situation. She's on board the Tavallon. Scheduled to arrive in approximately 2.1 days, sir. Contact her and use my authorization code to override the galactic speed limit. They ought to proceed with all due haste. Dom, now that's meddling Troy's going to be here. He still had no skill at hiding his brand new emotions from the likes of her. What would he do? He had to call Troy's ship. He could not raise suspicion. After Data had contacted the Tavallon, he went to engineering. He had a pile of equipment stacked on the floor over to one side when Worf stalked in. The Klutz almost tripped over the equipment. Commander, will you be moving this equipment soon? Data managed a polite little good android attitude. Yes, Mr. Worf. I am sorry if I have inconvenienced you. That did it. You're next, Jack. Wolf stalked away haughtily, just as Geordie walked in. Data, can I talk to you? Certainly, Geordie. Well, I just wanted to break some bad news to you alone so you wouldn't be surprised. It seems they've assigned a new CMO to the ship, and it's Kate Pulaski. Ship's grapevine says she's been having a tryst with Admiral No Funny Shit. And he thought he'd let her come on board the Enterprise to try and fix your memory. What? Wolf would be in his favourite holodeck on Deck 8. Sure enough, when he got to the holodeck entrance, he found Wolf's Calsynthetics program, Level 16, in progress. And barged in to find Wolf battling six green skulled hollow opponents. Data knew that Worf's routinely disabled the holodeck safety protocols. Data could possibly just make the program more advanced until the holograms killed Worf. But that would not be any fun. Do you not mind if I join you? Do you, Commander? Err, well, I err, guess not. Data felt himself getting a little aroused at the sight of the sweaty, grunting Klingon. Wolf liked to wear only a loincloth to his private workouts. Data was a bit warm, so he removed his uniform. He noticed he was now fully erect. Baird had dispatched all the hollow monsters but two, leaving Wolf to take care of them. As Wolf finished strangling the second one, Data saw a distinct bulge under the loincloth, which only made his own erection throb more acutely. He walked slowly towards Worf, a look of challenge in his eyes. Worf took the bait so easily, Data could hardly believe his good fortune. Data grabbed Worf's shoulder and spun him around, and then gave him a sharp jump to the back. Data couldn't resist the temptation of those hard buttocks any longer, and thrust into him to experience his most intense climax yet. He clothed himself. Computer! Level 22! He heard many hollow opponents materialising. Apparently, Worf's fascination with overriding the safety protocols was a fatal error. Data nodded in a business-like way as he left the holodeck area. It was only 4.36 hours later that he and Geordie received a message from Captain Riker to report to the transport room too, where Dr. Pulaski was arriving. Hello, Geordie. Hello, Data. Data gave her a nasty look. Oh, forgive me, Commander. I mean, Data. 
Do you think we could plug his brain into the holodeck so we could watch the whole thing? Data was embarrassed at Dr. Pulaski's lack of respect for him as a sentient being. She had not changed a bit. Uh, could you meet us in holodeck one, Doctor? I need Data to help me get the hydrosonic dissipator from my quarters. Certainly. Data was waiting until she was out of earshot. Geordie, why did you lie to Dr. Pulaski? Although I must admit, she is still as much of a bitch as ever. What Kate wants to do is a bunch of bullshit. I think she's using, using Admiral No Funny Shit to practice her voyeurism on you. She's not yet going to find anything useful from it. I trust you to tell me if you remember anything. After all, why wouldn't you? Yes. Why would I not? He asked, a little sadly. But Geordie was too steamed up to notice. I know. When she plugs you in, just disable the holodecks. That sounds like a reasonable course of action. Here you are, Mr. Data, Data. Whatever. Just lie on this diagnostic bed. Your turn is coming, sister. He wondered how he would ever get himself horny enough to fuck Pulaski. It didn't take Data long to find the EPS shunt and blow out all the hollow emitter power. Oh no! I wonder what happened! Not real great acting skill, but it will do. Doctor, I'd better get to engineering to check this out. Data, maybe you should come with me. Excuse me, Mr. LaForge, but the captain's order was for Data to receive his memories. Not to help you with the holodecks. We can still continue the experiment, even without the holodeck. It'll just take Mr. Data back up to sickbay where I can monitor him more closely. Once they got to sickbay, Pulaski shouted orders, Data, lie on this bio bed! Well, they unsealed his uniform to put sensors everywhere. Data did not ask Pulaski how the groin sensors were meant to help him regain his memory. Mr. Data, engage dream program. Oh, why did I get rid of Crusher? Bad idea.